so today, I will be talking about another trematode that inhabits the intestines of man, which is the Heterophyes heterophyes. So it is commonly called as von Siebold's fluke or heterophyid fluke. Its scientific classification is shown here. So you can see that it falls under the family Heterophyidae and the genus Heterophyes. So the, actually, there are other many species of Heterophyid, but the major species are the Metagenimus yokogawai, Haplorchis taikui, and Haplorchis yokogawai. So a brief history about this parasite. It was first originally collected by Bill Harns in 1851 from a human being in Egypt. However, von Siebold renamed the parasite into Distoma heterophyes. So as what I have said, it is a small parasitic fluke worm. So it primarily infects humans to eat raw or undercooked fish that is infected by the metacercaria stage of the parasite. So the metacercaria stage is actually the infective stage of the parasite. So it is among the minor test fluke, yet it can be deadly. So it is almost indistinguishable from the other major species that I have mentioned earlier especially their eggs, which are very indistinguishable from each other. However, there are other distinguishing features, such as their morphology, which I will be mentioning later, and of course, in their preferences on their inter intermediate host. So moving on for their biology and morphologies. Since it is a trematode, it exhibits different stages of morphologies. So first, we have their ova or egg. So it is ovoid in shape or elongated, and its color is yellow to light brown, and it has an operculation. So the egg contains the embryo, which is called as the miracidium. So its size is 20 to 30 micrometer by 15 to 17 micrometer. So you can see here in the picture that it has an operculation. So this part is the operculation which serve as a door. So in this another picture, you can see that the operculations are not that distinct, meaning that the operculations are fitting in smoothly within the shell. So in this picture, you can see that we have the heterophyid egg in HPO, which we have seen in our laboratory activities. So it is important to note that the eggs of the heterophyids are sometimes referred to as opisthorchid like eggs. So this is because they have a close resemblance to the opisthorchis beverini and clonorchis So you can so you can see here in this picture that it has a distinct operculation as opposed to the eggs of the heterophyes which has a smooth operculation. And also it has an Abopercular knob on the opposite side, which is lacking in the eggs of the heterophyids. So you can see here in the picture that it has a distinct feature on their opposite sides compared to the eggs of the heterophyids. So next, we have the myracidia or the myracidium, which is the embryo. So this stage is a non feeding stage because they do not have a mouth. So it is elongated and it is covered with flattened epidermal plates and it is also ciliated. So the Mulacidia escape from the eggs through the operculum which I have mentioned earlier. So you can see here that it contains the stem cells which will differentiate into another form later in their life cycle. Next, we have the sporocyst and the radiae. So the sporocysts are elongated in shape and it has a germinal sac which contains the germinal cells from the original ova. So these germinal cells, or sometimes referred to as germinal balls, are immature radiae. So the sporocyst may either produce another sporocyst or it will produce a radiae. So next, we have the radiae. So red, the radiae contains a, contains a mouth and so it is a feeding stage. And also, it contains a cell which will differentiate into a cercaria. So the radiae will either produce another radiae or it will differentiate into a cercaria. So next, we have the cercaria. So the cercaria has a tapering head and it has no reproductive structure. 
However, it do contains a complete digestive tract. Along with that, it also has an oral sucker which is located here. The oral sucker is responsible for adhering to their host. Next, they have two eye spots, a pharynx, and a penetration gland. So the penetration gland plays an important role in host penetration. So it was said that it can even penetrate cheating covered arthropods. Or in this case, it can penetrate the scales of their, of their second intermediate host, which is the fish. And it also has an excretory bladder. So all of them are located in their head. So, na so now, we have their tail. So their tail has two parts, which is the lateral fin fold and the dorsal ventral fin fold. So the dorsal ventral fin fold is located here, and their lateral fin fold is located here. So, it also has a sensory hair which will, which is sensitive to stimuli. So, it will allow them to locate their host. So, next, we have the metacercaria. So, as what I have mentioned earlier, metacercaria is the infective stage of the parasite. So, it is simply a cercaria that has insisted and resting. So, it is non-motile. It, it has no tail and it is small and ovoidal. Also, it is surrounded by a thin layer of hyaline cyst wall as seen here. So, this picture shows a metacercaria that has insisted in the bory and bolty fish muscles. So, metacercaria can be seen in the fins, the muscles, and the adipose tissue surrounding the organs of the fish. So, the last morphological stage is the adult worm. Heterophyids are hermaphrodite, meaning that the adult worm exhibits both the ovary and the testes. Their shape is oval, elongated, or piriform. The size is less than 2 mm in length, and it is surrounded by a fine, scale-like tegument. But more importantly, it has an oral sucker which is located here, and a setabulum, which is also called as ventral sucker, and it is located here. But more importantly, it has a third sucker, which is called as the gonotil or the genital sucker. So the third sucker is a unique feature of the heterophyids, since only the heterophyids among all the trematodes contains the gonotil. So these suckers are responsible for their adhesion in the intestinal walls of man. Here, we have the difference between the morphology of the adult worm of the heterophyes and the Metagionimus yokogawai. So, in Metagionimus yokogawai, their gonotil and ventral sucker are fused together. However, in heterophyes, it is not fused together. And also, the reproductive structure of the heterophyes are seen submedian, while the ovary of the Metagionimus yokogawai can be seen medially. So the life cycle of the heterophyids follows the same as the other intestinal flukes. It also has two intermediate hosts. The first intermediate host is the snail and the second intermediate host are the freshwater or brackish water fish. And ban serves as the definitive host. So let me first start by the definitive host which is the man ingesting raw or undercooked fish containing the infective stage of the parasite which is the metacercaria stage. So once ingested, it will go into the small intestine particularly in the duodenum. Once there, it will exist and then it will then attach to the intestinal villi. So from there, it will form into adult worm which has a lifespan of less than one year. So it has a short lifespan compared to the other parasites. From And also, it will lay its eggs which are passed out together with the feces into the environment. So the eggs that are passed out into the environment are already embryonated. Thus, it will be ready to infect its first intermediate host which is the snail. So again, the infective stage of the parasite into the snail is the embryonated eggs. So the snail will then ingest the eggs and then the myracidia will hatch from the eggs through the operculum. 
and it will then go into the snail's intestine. So from there, it will penetrate the snail's tissue and will undergo three larval stages, which is the sporocyst, the radiae, and the cercariae. So cercaria will then be released from the snail, and since the cercaria is motile, it will find its way into its second intermediate host, which is the fish. So again, the infective stage of the parasite to the fish is the cercaria. So once it will penetrate the fish, it will then insist and form into metacercaria, which is located primarily at the muscles at the base of the fins of the fishes. So it will now be ready to infect another human being to eat raw or undercooked fish containing the infective stage. However, you can see in this life cycle that there is a red arrow indicating that not only man can be a definitive host. Also, fish-eating mammals like dogs and cats and also birds can be infected as well. So here is another representation of the life cycle of heterophytes. So a man will defecate near bodies of water releasing eggs into the aquatic environment which will penetrate the mirror the snails and then the snails will then release cercaria which will penetrate the fish which serve as the second intermediate host and then the fish will then be ingested by the man. So another cycle is repeated. So a point of interest. Cerithidopsilia cingulata is the first main intermediate host for heterophyes in Southeast Asia. So for the disease association, heterophyes infection is called as heterophyasis. For its pathogenesis, so what I had mentioned earlier is that each adult worm has three suckers. So those suckers are responsible for the adhesion of the intestinal walls of man particularly in the upper and the middle portion of the small intestines. So each worm causes a mild inflammatory reaction at its site of contact with the mucosa. And because of that, there is a sloughing off of superficial layers in the intestinal wall. And in some cases of heavy infections, there is a damage in the mucosa. And to compensate for that damage, there is an overproduction of mucus which can be found in the stools of the patients. So there is a report in Africa which showed that the adult worms tend to burrow deep into the intestinal walls where they become trapped and eventually die. So the eggs of those dead worms can be filtered through the lymphovascular system and the lymphatic vessels and the blood vessels carry those eggs and deposit them into various tissues more commonly in the brain, the spinal cord, and in the heart. So heterophiasis is a self-limiting infection. So in cases of light infections, it is usually asymptomatic and mild. However, in heavy infections, it can include colicky abdominal pain, which is not localized, gurgling abdomen, and upper abdominal pain. And it can also cause mucus to be present in the stool accompanied by diarrhea. In some cases, in severe infections, a granuloma may form. So if eggs are deposited into the brain, it can cause intracerebral hemorrhage, which can lead to sensory and motor losses. And if eggs are deposited into the heart, it can cause heterophyid myocarditis, which can lead to chronic heart failure. So in a study done in Compostela Valley, it was found out that the most common clinical manifestations were signs and symptoms of acid peptic disease or peptic ulcers. So it is probably due to the thinning of the intestinal walls brought upon by the actions of the adult worms. So in the picture, it shows an intracerebral hemorrhage and the other one shows an inflammation in the intestinal walls. For the laboratory diagnosis, so the definitive diagnosis is through microscopic identification of eggs in the stool using modified k thick method. However, we should be careful since the eggs of the heterophyes closely resemble the eggs of the clonorchis and opistorchis. So in cases of light intensity infection, polymeric chain reaction may be used. Lastly, a full blood count could be used since heterophyasis has a high degree of eosinophilia. For the treatment, 
Prasicantel is still the best treatment of choice as of today. So it is given 25 milligrams per dose three times a day. Epidemiology. So, Hetalfaiz has a worldwide distribution due to the fact that it has adapted to various families of snails and it is not very specific in their second intermediate host. However, it is prevalent in certain countries like in Africa, Egypt, Philippines, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, and in Israel. So, these countries have practices of ingesting raw or undercooked fish such as kinilaw and sushi. For the prevention and control, avoidance from having raw or undercooked fish is still the best method in preventing the spread of the parasite. Along with that, using molossicides for snail control could be used. Lastly, hand washing after handling fish could stop the transmission of the parasite. So that's all for Hetelfais Hetelfais.